Two weeks are in the books in Western Massachusetts football, and as we approach kickoff of week three, the number one team in Western Mass, the Golden Eagles of Central, takes on the third ranked team in Western Massachusetts, the East Long Meadow Spartans, next here on LCAP. Welcome everyone to East Long Meadow here on September 20th, 2013. I'm Tom Cronin, joined alongside Matt and Domenico. And Matt, you were unable to cover the East Long Meadow last week against Amherst. You were doing a soccer game here at East Long Meadow, but East Long Meadow won 28 to 14. Really in convincing fashion, but East Long Meadow players during the week saying they could have won better. You did see the South Hadley game though in the first game. What do you like from this East Long Meadow team as they're going to go up against the powerhouse here in Western Mass in the Golden Eagles? Well, first of all, the South Hadley game was a very convincing win. Uh, I'm sure everyone can establish that on their own. Um, although they said um, they didn't feel that they didn't have as good as a game as, uh, against um, Amherst uh, last week, uh, it still was a win. And uh, now against this powerhouse here, um, East Long Meadow is fired up 2-0, and and they want to uh, come out strong here, on um, both sides of the ball especially. Yeah, in that Amherst game, Kennedy found six different receivers throughout the whole game. He had 100 yards and two touchdowns. Uh, Amherst had 340 yards, so the defense was a little shaky. I remember uh, East Long Meadow was up 28 nothing, and then Amherst obviously scored the two touchdowns. But, hey, a win's a win. Exactly, yep. And uh, as you can see, you know, the captains have already met at midfield, and now they're coming back to their respective sides and met. What are your predictions on this game with, you know, Central being, what, a 2,000, you know, school population-wise, right. and we're being 900. So Central has a lot to pick from. But sometimes Central, they might come in overconfident, and you can't do that. Right. I mean, we talked before, you know, 150 kids try out for this Central team, and they even end to end up cutting players. So, you know, they are very stacked with talent, and, uh, um, you know, and I expect this game to be a very competitive game, even though we are, you know, a smaller team, uh, you know, by – population wise but I believe we can compete up to their level and I expect this one to be a very tight game down at the end and uh, we're gonna take a quick break as the national anthem will approach momentarily Matt, I've been waiting for this game since the schedule came out last summer. You know, de definitely East Alameda is the underdog if you had to yep. choose one. But East Alameda riding a lot of momentum being 2-0. Oh, absolutely, yep. And really, Matt, they, they can pass it and they can run it. East Alameda has a slate of running backs. But also, Kennedy finds Taft and Richard Yukalakarania on the uh, receiver side of the end. They've done an excellent job demonstrating uh, the passing game, especially from Devin Kennedy. And uh, the running game has been very solid as well. Uh, in the defense, too. It's just been very good so far throughout the season for East Long Meadow, hoping they can keep it up here today. And as uh, you can see on the field, East Long Meadow will be receiving to start off the game. And, Matt, for Central, you really got to look out for Jawan Williams and Cody Williams. Yep. They are cousins, and uh, they like to find each other a lot. Last game against Everett, who was ranked, I believe, second in the state when they played them. They lost 31-23, Central did. But Cody Williams had a great game 
with his cousin uh, Juwan, and they uh, hooked up for 121 yards overall. So they're definitely the key players for Central. And the opening kickoff is brought to you in part by the Pizza Shop, home of the famous and legendary dough. That's the Pizza Shop in East Saw Meadow. It will be returned by John Bortolucci, who gets to around the 30-yard line to start off the game. Matt, what's going to be bigger tonight for East Saw Meadow, the passing game or the running game in your mind, or do you think it has to be a balanced mix? Yeah, I, b I believe it is supposed to be, or it should be, a balanced approach from the Spartans tonight. Uh, you know, you don't want to go too much on one side of the ball. You know, you don't want to pass too much. Again, you don't want to run too much. So uh, it's always good to see a nice balance, especially against um, a tough Central team like this one. Central is ranked sixth in the state. East Saw Meadows kind of on that out of 10 brink on the bubble. Yep. So both teams having a ton of star power. This game is definitely one of the highlighted games in Massachusetts. And you can see Kennedy under center. No one in the backfield, so... We'll expect a pass here. And he rolls out, and he's going to get to the corner and out of bounds. And nothing doing for East Saw Meadow on the first play. Opening drive of East Long Meadow is brought to you by Let's Yo. Let's Yo, a yogurt experience. Kennedy in shotgun now. He's got Tommy K to his left. And it is second and 14. Fizzino in motion, and it's on the ground, and that's not how East Long Meadow wanted to start with the Golden Eagles, I believe, recovering. They will, and Matt, that is the ultimate nightmare for East Long Meadow to start off this way. Right, you don't want to see a turnover on the second play of the game. Uh, unfortunately, uh, Central recovers a fumble on second down, and uh, they'll be inside the 30-yard line to start their drive. Do you think that's opening drive jitters, maybe? Yeah, uh, I mean, you also have a big defensive line from Central putting a lot of pressure and probably something they've not seen so far this season of this intensity like this, but, uh, you know, they're going to have to get used to it soon and uh, yeah. step it up. Yeah, man, that's a good point. I mean, Amherst and South Hadley are good to their respect, but right. I, don't, th I right. don't think they're a Central. Right. But still, I mean, it's still high school football, and I, as I've always said, it's 50-50 every night. Yep. And as you can see, Cody Williams in the shotgun formation now directing his offense. Number four, Troy Moreau is next to him. Williams drops back, looking, goes deep into the end zone, and it is going to be cut by Central, and Central's up early here in week three. And I believe that was Jawan Williams with the reception in the first TD of the night. Williams to Williams, first play of the game. Down the sideline, a nice pass. He got up there and he uh, got both feet down in the end zone for an early 6-0 central lead. Looking to make it 7 here. Murrow will kick the PAT. Cody Williams will hold it for him. I mean, wow, the second play of the game. All right. A fumble, then a touchdown. And now there's going to be a little shift in formation here. Looks like they move side to side, and the PAT is up from Morrow, and it splits the uprights. 7-0 Central here with 11.38 left in the first quarter. Matt, still still early, but... Uh, oh, yeah. It's, you know, the game's just begun. Got to shake it off. First drive. A little bit of mess-ups here and here, but uh, they're looking to get right back into it here as we start their second drive today. Well, Central was favored 27-20 coming into tonight, and that uh, prediction was on Mass Live. We'll get to we'll get to some other predictions later on the broadcast. And 27-20 would have been a thriller game, but um, you know I think East Lomino just they were slow on their tempo, but I think they maybe need to hand it up the middle a little bit more. Um, but you never know. I mean, maybe they're trying to trick mm -hmm. Central. You know, I don't have a playbook. I'm not you know <laughs> the coaching staff, but uh, East Lomino did look calm though. They didn't really look rushed. I think that was just a little you know, mis-execution mis yeah. on uh, the offense. But really, that's the first time where East Saw Meadows really had a turnover this whole season. They haven't made many. And here's the kickoff. And it's a short one. And let's see if Richard will retrieve it. He will. And he has trouble with it. And let's see who got it. It's a scrum down there. 
And it looks like Central got it. And yes, Central will have the ball, so. All right, well, one thing you don't do when you get a ball that low is try to come up with it like that because he muffed it. Yeah, Richard really took a weird bounce on him. Right, if, if you get a ball on the ground, you want to dive on the ball. Or just let it go. Why even take well, a chance? Well, no, if you can't let it go because then they can recover. They can recover the ball. That's true, too. Because, uh, you know, once it passes after 10 yards, the kicking team right. can recover the right. ball. But um, you don't want to stand up and try to pick it right. up because then you're getting really risky, and that's, you know, a result. So uh, you want to dive on the ball for any loose ball like that. Yeah, I'm thinking in terms of a punt. Uh, right, you don't right, right, right. But uh, right. You're, you're exactly right. right. But, uh, you know, just another mistake by East Lamento here. And Central, one great chance to score again as uh, Williams to Williams on the play. Makes a few people miss, and he's going to get another touchdown. He's second of the night. Central up early. 13 nothing with 11.26 left. And, uh, Matt, if this, if this keeps up, uh, it's going to be a long night for the <laughs> Spartans. Um, oh, yeah. Still, though, it, it, it's not over. Right, but two offensive plays and two touchdowns for Central. This very, very talented offensive and defensive team. They're sixth in the state. Yeah, sixth in the state, first in Western Mass. Right. And the kick is up, and it is good. So 14 nothing Central leads here. And, uh, Matt, really just mental mistakes. Yeah, again, uh, a, muffed, uh, a muffed kick return and a fumble behind the line of scrimmage. Um, you know, a couple turnovers, but, um, you know, it really is what you're saying. It's like it's a mental mistake. So this, these are all problems that can be fixed. Yeah, I agree. These obviously these problems can be fixed. Now, Matt, we're obviously big East Long Metal Spartan football fans, but our camera girl, Jamie Rook, is a former Golden Eagle, uh -oh. and uh, she is sporting oh, the no. Central Springfield Central Golden Eagle sweatshirt. And uh, we've been talking over the past three weeks about this game coming up, and uh, she must be pretty happy. But <laughs> you know, comebacks can always happen. It's never over. Kick is up, and Magic Pinto is back to return, but Bordalusi catches it and goes to his right side. Ball comes out again, and is picked up by Central, and the Golden Eagles are going to be tackled before the goal line, but they're still in great position to score again. It was recovered by Nate Smith, I believe, number 13 of the Golden Eagles. Third fumble of the game, Matt. You know... This is what South Hadley did in week one, as we said. Yeah, that's what it looks like right now. Central in great position to strike again to try to make it 20 to nothing, and there is going to be a little pause, but it looks like we're back to normal here. Williams under center. Drops back, hands it up the middle. And it's good for yep. a central touchdown scored by number 45, Marcel Davis. Wow. All three first downs for central they've scored on. And you know, Matt, back in the offseason, Esau Meadow went to a camp called Watito, and they right. beat Central in a scrimmage. Looking to make it a three-possession ball game early in the first quarter. Kick is up, and kick is good. A little jitters early for East Long Meadow, looks like. Three turnovers. Definitely not the way you saw Mudo wanted to start here in week three. But still, I will always say there's always enough time. There definitely is enough time. They, they just need to get a drive with no turnovers, obviously. 
And as you can see, Magic Pinto's back there with Richard and John Bortolucci. But you know what, Matt? To play devil's advocate here, Central might get a little comfortable with this lead. Right. And if you get too comfortable Maybe with the lead. Maybe a little overconfident. But um, regardless, he's Lometto needs to uh, get on know, the board. Get right. on the board of this right. possession. Yep. You know, at least maintain possession. Have a little difficulty early on handling the football. Really, and that hasn't been a problem for East Long at all. I don't remember it being a problem last year and in the previous two games I've seen. As this one is going to be kicked to Richard, he holds on to it, almost has a little bit of trouble with it. Gets away from one man and is going to be brought down by a sea of white shirts around the 27-yard line. Matt, this is really where the team chemistry has to come in for Islam at all. Yep. Forget, forget the talent we have and all that. The team chemistry has to come in in the situation being down 21 nothing with 10.54 left. Still obviously early. This is where, like I said, yep. the players that have been playing since third grade together, you know, we right. were obviously the whole week in school, this has been, uh, you know, everyone's hyped up about this game. A good crowd here tonight for Islam Meadow. Mm -hmm. And uh, like I said, the players that have been playing since third grade really have to get it going here. As nothing's working there for East Long Meadow on first down. East Long Meadow going with the uh, hurry up offense. We saw that a lot last year. As Kennedy rolls to his right, finds Tanner Vizino on the side. And, and you know what, Matt? That's what they needed. A right. nice little short pass to short the passes, side. Yep. Quick short passes. Moving down the field. Spartan first down. Devin Kennedy under center, Ryan Taft at the far left of him. Kennedy hands it up the middle, and a good gain for Isla Meadow. Mikey Magipinto with the run. On the air, Magipinto has 184 yards, and he averages 10 yards per carry. Definitely a stellar sophomore for these almost Spartans as Kennedy Hands it up the middle again, and Central's right there to stop him. They just got back to the line of scrimmage with forward progress. So third and three. Ball in the Islam Meadows half. Kennedy drops back, goes to his left. Finds Vizino, he's got the first down, makes a few people miss, and will be down around the 45 yard line. Another nice job, Devin Kennedy, finding uh, Tanner for Zeno off to the left for a short screen pass. And he manages to get three yards and a little bit more. Kennedy sends Fizzino in motion again, fakes the uh, pitch, gives it to Taft, and Taft gets a few. Matt, they're starting to seem a little bit more in sync now. Yeah, I, they seem to get the offense going. It seemed like, you know, they had a the first couple drives, they had a little bit of, you know, nervous uh, issues, I believe, with a couple fumbles. But it uh, looks like they're getting their act together right now. Kennedy rolls. He's flushed, finds a man, and it's going to be dropped. It looks like it went through Magic Pinto's hands. And then Bortolucci tried to catch it, and he was unsuccessful. So it'll be third down for Islamato. Big third down here early for you, so I'm gonna definitely want to keep this drive yep. alive. Kennedy fakes the handoff, nice old pitch to Vizino. Vizino's got the Jets on, and he's gonna be, let's see if he got it. Just short. Now, I don't see why they wouldn't go for it right now. Yeah, I agree. Yep, they're going to go for it. It's fourth and one. 
I can see Coach Maurer giving the sign, the offensive coordinator. Kennedy up the middle. He should be good. Yep, that's enough. I like that call. You got to keep yep. this drive alive. You got to get at least a field goal. A touchdown would be great. So ball at the 34-yard line. Kennedy gives it up the middle of the Magic Pinto and doesn't get much. The flag uh, is thrown. Yep. Let's see who it's on. Some of the Isamino coaches are up in arms here, trying to figure out what's going on tonight with East Long Meadow. Already giving up three touchdowns. And Matt, really, you can't blame it on the defense because Central got those turnovers right. in the red zone, basically. Well, it'll be a face mask on Central, so it'll be first and 10. And now that's a costly error on Central side. Now East Long Meadows in striking distance. Yep, now they're inside the red zone for their first time today. And boy, Matt, if they score and then get a defensive stop, what a confidence booster that would be for East Long Meadow. Doing a nice job moving down the field right now. Hand off to Mikey Magic Pinto off to the right side for a gain of a couple yards. Seems like they're settled in now. Yeah, I agree. Yep. I agree. You know, I think it was just a little... Offense uh, is clicking. And in the beginning, just some jitters going on. As Kennedy hands it up the middle again, and Mikey Magic Pinto gets inside the 10-yard line, and now East Long Meadows fans are starting to get a little rowdy and starting to cheer. And you can see the bench even, Matt, starting to you know, jump up and down a little bit, trying to get East Long Meadow... Yep. You know, their spirits back in this game. It looks like they're looks like they're gonna uh, doing a good job here. Kennedy rolls to his left, looks, fires, finds Mikey Magapinto, who's just gonna be short of score on the first touchdown of the night for East Long Meadow. So it'll be second and goal for East Long Meadow. And there's gonna be a timeout on the field. And yeah, Islam Meadows doing an excellent job on this drive. Uh, moving along right down the field. They've converted twice on third downs on this drive. And now they're inside the five yard line. Second and goal for the Spartans. Always, ha always fun to have the band in front of us, but you know what, Matt? As an announcer, when you're always talking, it's good to get a nice sip of water once in a while. <laughs> so East Long Meadow looking to get on the board the first time for the first time tonight. Kennedy under center sends a man in motion, goes up the middle, flag on the play, and Mikey Magic Pinto will not score. But let's see what the call is. Defensive offsides and uh, distance will be halfway to the goal. Yeah, that's two penalties on Central uh, on this drive. So we're just over seven minutes here in the first quarter. Central 21, East Long Metal nothing, but they are in striking distance to make it 21-6. Kennedy under center, Magic Pinto in the backfield. Bordelusi in motion, they hand it to Magic Pinto who's tripped up in the backfield and gets no gain. Looks like they had a little difficulty on communicating there. The handoff was too much on his inside shoulder, and as Devin Kennedy rolled out, he knocked him over. There get another chance here on third down. Defense, 
Kennedy goes to his left, and he's going to be wrapped up in the backfield. Coach Maurer not happy with how East Lamino executed that play, and East Lamino is going to have to settle for a field goal, field goal, I'm assuming. No, it looks like they're going to stay out there. Matt, uh, what do you think of this call? You know, I think it is a good call. Even though it is early, it is a three-possession game. They really need to start cutting back on this lead right now. Uh, they're at the 10-yard line, and on fourth down, it looks like they have you know, a chance to do it here. Pass left off the board of Lucy. Cuts inside. And they're going to mark him just short. It's going to be a turnover on downs for the Golden Eagles. A big stop here early. And it looked like, you know, John Bordalusi was yep. putting on, you know, the Jets there, but he just wasn't able to stretch in there as he was hit by a few Golden Eagles. So the score remains 21-0. Just can't break the goal line right now. Have a little difficulty. But you know, Matt, they started on the other side of the 50, and that was a productive right. drive. Oh, yeah, absolutely. No doubt about it. That was an excellent drive. Uh, just falling about a yard short. Looking to get a big defensive stop here uh, back in... Uh, their own territory. And there's going to be a flag on the play. We'll see what the call is in just a moment. But Matt, you got to be impressed with Cody Williams. Uh, he uh, committed to Monmouth, which I believe is a Division right. One AA school. Definitely has a lot of talent. And so does his cousin, uh, Juwan Williams. Uh -huh. They can call them Williams a lot of squared. Team. <laughs> but yeah, for sure. Offsides on East Long Meadow. It's going to be first and five. First and five, still deep in Central's end, though. Williams under center. He's got two men behind him, hands it up to the running back. Number six, that's Daquan Clemens, who is going to be... Good, or he did reach the first down line. Again, we I wish we had the yellow line like the uh, CBFs and NFL Network have, but that'd be pretty cool. But Matt, this is really uh, the first drive where Central really has to actually go down a long way to score. Right. They've had the ball inside the Spartan 50 all three times. They've had the ball and they've successfully converted all three times. And now they're started the drive at their own one yard line. It's going to be second and six for the Golden Eagles. Again, East Saw Meadow is 2-0. The uh, Golden Eagles are 1-0. Uh, excuse me, 0-1. They went up to Everett and lost 31-23, who is a powerhouse in Western Mass. Williams up the middle to Clemens. Clemens is going to be good for the first down. Have to wait for the chains to move. Central just have so many options. So first and 10, where we are under five minutes here in the first quarter. Williams drops back, gives it to a central wide receiver. That's number four, Troy Moreau, who gets a few. So second and eight. Golden Eagles definitely having all the momentum of this game except for that one drive. Even though Isamino couldn't score, we can see Williams rolling out. He's under pressure. He's looking for someone. And let's see if Isamino's defense can get him. They will. Around the line of scrimmage. Yeah. That was an excellent job by Cody Williams. Moving around in the pocket. And just started running all over the place. They managed to get back to the line. That was an excellent job by Cody Williams. I mean, you can only think if East Lamino sacked Williams in the backfield, how much of a uh, confidence boost oh, yeah. that would be for East Lamino. Yep. They get their chance here on third down. 
Oh, either way, if they do stop him, stop him here on third down, that'd be great too. As we see a nice appearance from the 1,000 point scorer, Sam Blake in the, in the LCAT booth tonight. SB1K. February 19th, 2013. Matt, that was a great night, even though they ended up losing. As we see, Williams is going to try to run for the first down. Ball comes out. And let's see who got it. East Saw Metal signaling they have it. It will be East Saw Metal's ball. And Matt, this is what they need. Big one by the change of free song metal. First turnover tonight by the Golden Eagles. Crowd seems to be coming alive a little bit. And they're inside the central 50. here in the first quarter. Esau Meadow with good field possession here. Hand up the middle to Tommy K. And he gets a few. Matt, really, the offensive line for Esau Meadow is still staying strong. Oh, yeah. Uh, they're doing the best they can, and they're actually doing a very good job of uh, holding off this central D-line. Who's really bringing the pressure so far tonight, but they've Done a decent job the past couple of drives of handling it. Here's Tanner Fazino on the sweep. Yeah, and the oh, men. That was actually Mikey Major Pinto. The men in the trenches for East Salmetto, or the usual men in the trenches, are, is uh, senior captain Brennan Logan, the junior Connor Humphreys. Uh, Brett Smith is also a junior. Ben O'Connor is a senior. And James Griffin, who's a junior. Sean Driscoll, Riley Held, and Richard Yukalakarania also fill in. Coach Raymond saying earlier in the week that uh, the line had to be big, and really the line is being big, but yep. it's just been the costly turnovers East Salmetto has had that's led to a 21 nothing lead. It really hasn't been how East Salmetto has played physically. It's just been how they've played right. mentally. But that's changed over the past right, couple Right, just the first couple minutes. drives. You know, they were all pumped up, kind of a little nervous, but uh, it seems that the nerves have kind of left. There's a handoff, Mikey Magipinto. And he got left hit hard. Side. Yeah. A four-yard pickup. It's going to be about third and five coming up. A big third down. Excuse me, second down here for the Spartans. Fizzino in motion. Kennedy hands it. And he's not going to get much on the play. So it'll be third and two. He got a three-yard gain. He saw it on striking distance for the second time of the night. Kennedy looking over to Coach Dan Maurer getting the uh, signal from the sideline. Central making some defensive line movement. Kennedy up the middle, and the ball comes out. Fourth fumble of the night for East Long Meadow. Looks like it's going to be Golden Eagles ball. We'll see the signal from the men in black and white in just a bit. No, it'll stay with Islam at all. Matt, wow. <laughs> Good fight by Islam at to Keep that ball. And now it's fourth and two. And it's a must get here for Islam Meadow. Demi Kennedy up the gut. Looks like he got it. Just over 10 seconds left. And they're looking to get one more play in before the end of the quarter. Kennedy rolls to his left, looking, finds a man out of his hands. It's going to be, it was picked, but it's out of the hands of a central goal. Yeah, Eagle. he didn't have complete possession of the ball, and they got very lucky that he didn't hang on to it because it would have been the fourth turnover tonight. But instead, he's long metal. We'll get the ball back here with 2.6 seconds to go. Yeah, a little, little hot potato there. It went out yeah. of Magic Pinto's hand and then out of a central Golden Eagle safety. A uh, sigh of relief here for the Spartans and the crowd. Yeah, two times a sigh of relief. Yeah. The fumble and then that uh, near interception. All right, so two seconds left. 
Here, Islam Metal will get one more play in the first quarter. Trying to get on the board for the first time of the night. Kennedy loses a snap, falls on it though. And that's going to end the first quarter with the Central Golden Eagles. They lead 21-0 over the Islam Metal Spartans. You know, the second half of the first half, in my opinion, was pretty much dominated by East Long Metal. Even though they did score, they, you know, handled the central pressure uh, that, you know, that came right out of the gate in the, in the beginning of the first quarter when they scored three consecutive touchdowns, which was very tough, I'm sure, for East Long Meadow. But uh, they managed to come back, they settled in, and they did what they needed to do. But now they just need to score. Yeah, man, that's a great point. The uh, second half of the first half, like you said, that's, that was a good performance by Islam Meadow, even though two times they weren't able to get in. They're still in striking distance here on third down and ten when we resume the second quarter, or when we get into the second quarter. But uh, Matt, laughing at the band here, trying to get our words out. But yep. uh, Like you said, Matt, there's still a lot of time left in this game. You know, it, it's, it's a three-possession game. It's still reachable. Appreciate the Spartan band here tonight. Beautiful and loud like always. I tell you what, Matt, it's a uh, beautiful night here in East Meadow. Yep. The weather's great. Good showing by the East Meadow faithful here on a Friday night in September. And you, you usually don't see the fans wrapped around uh, the uh, right. field goal post, but other than for the Long Meadow game. As you can see on the left side of the field, you can see some of them start to wrap around. And then we can't even see behind the booth, and you know that's where all the Birchland kids usually hang out. Remember those days? Back in the 7th and 8th grade <laughs> days, remember that? All right, so we'll switch sides of the field. He saw Meadow trying to get on the board. And as Matt pointed out earlier, really having control as Kennedy will roll to his right, finds a man, and a little tip drill there, but... The there flag is, is thrown in the backfield. I tell you what, Matt, the flag is thrown, but Kennedy looks a little shaken up. This one might be roughing the passer. Y yeah, I would think so, but I'm more worried about Kennedy. All right, it looks so like he's okay, but if it is roughing the passer, it's an automatic first down. Let's see what the call is. Actually, this one is against oh, East Long Meadow. Yep. Wow. Penalty's going to be declined. I thought Kennedy got hit late. Yeah, I thought he got roughed up a little bit, but uh, they're going to be pushed back a little more on fourth down. And let's see what they do here. As you can see on the sideline, Ryan Dunn is warming up for the Spartans. Freshman quarterback, hopefully Devin Kennedy's all right. He's throwing to Tyler Maloney. Excuse me, Tyler Maloney and Ryan Dunn are both warming up. Kennedy goes to his side, finds Taft. Taft breaks one man and gets tackled out of bounds. And it'll be another four and out for your Salmetto. I believe that's the second of the night. Yeah. So Matt, uh, you see Tyler Maloney and Ryan Dunn. I didn't see Tyler Maloney. I only saw Ryan Dunn. We get cut off here in the booth with the wall. I look over. So I would assume if anything's wrong with Devin Kennedy, Tyler Maloney would come in, the junior. Right. Devin Kennedy just took uh, the last snap on that drive. So he seems to be all right. Hopefully he is. Another East Law Metal star is in the house, Luis Rodriguez who will try to go for 1,000 points this upcoming basketball season. Run up the middle by Markle Davis. For Golden Eagle first down. Man, on both sides, this is really a slow uh, tempo game. It really isn't a lot of hurry up. Right, yeah, ever since uh, the first three scores by Central, uh, it's slowed down a little bit. And Owen has scored ever since. Another handoff off to the left side for a short little gain. So 
So it'll be second and down for the Golden Eagles. And whistle's blown on the field. And looks like it's going to be a timeout. Yep. So it'll be a timeout, Golden Eagles. Vladim Vladimir Bra Brower will call the timeout. As I said, Central was favorite to beat East Seminole 27-20. Other predictions on that slide, you have uh, the Brownies beating Chigbee 28-12. Chigbee Comp is predicted to beat Pittsfield 22-14. East Hampton over Mahar 30-21. Franklin Tech 24, Palmer 14. Greenfield 22, Belchertown 16. Longmeadow is predicted to beat Holyoke 30-13. Mahawk over Dean Tech 26-12. Pathfinder against Smith uh, Voke, 28-14. Uh, 14. Putnam over Minichog, 32-14. That'll be a great game to see. Turner Falls, 30. Ludlow, 14. Westfield, 30. And West Springfield, 28. And Westfield, Matt, is ranked 19th in Massachusetts. Wow. The Bombers, surprising everybody. That, that is very surprising. How about, how about the uh, Brownies over there in Aguam, ranked second in Western Mass. Vicarelli behind center for the Brownies, yep. having a kind of a uh, Cinderella season, you could say. Already yeah, that early season upset against Long Meadow. As you can see here, Williams looking for someone. East Lomano brings him down in the backfield. Mikey Magipinto with the stop. Third and long here for the Golden Eagles. And for the Saturday games, Frontier is, beat to, is predicted to beat Cathedral 18-12. Pioneer Valley over Ware 28-18. St. Mary over Amherst 26-24. And again, all of those predictions are on Mass Live. Each week they update, so you guys can all check that out. Looks like Williams is changing the play here. Scanning the field, rolling to his left. Goes over the middle and in and out of the hands of his Golden Eagle receiver. Nice third down stop. It's going to be fourth down and uh, Central will bring on the punting unit. The attended wide receiver was Malik, Malik Johnson who had two touchdowns in the opener for Central against Everett. He's kind of the uh, underrated player behind the Williams, uh, the Williams combo. I tell you what, there's a lot of Williams on this team. You got a Jawan Williams, a, a Antoine Williams, a Cody Williams. We'll find some more later. You, you really can't go wrong saying Williams for this team as Central punted off and a fair catch by Ryan Taft just around the 50 yard line. Good field position here for East Long Meadow. And I tell you what, Matt, with all the fumbles that have gone on tonight, that was a really good catch by Ryan Taft to secure that ball yeah. with pressure on him. And a smart move to call the fair catch. But, Matt, do you regret not going for the field goals now if you're East Long Meadow? Well, they've only had about, I think, yeah, they've had two field goal opportunities so far in this game. and Just to get some points on the board. You know, right. always. But, uh. I think going for it was a smart choice, even though they didn't come up with it, because uh, they're going to need a couple touchdowns regardless of how many field goals, I mean, they get right now. So uh, touchdowns are a necessity. Kennedy hands it to Fizzino. Fizzino's got some blockers, and he's going to get a couple on the uh, handoff. So second and eight, we are under 10 minutes here in the first half. Nissan Metal still trying to get on the board as you see Andrew Frappier in, in motion, but at the handoff is to Mikey Magipinto, who gets enough for the first down. Good run there by Mikey Magipinto in the last play. And Kennedy, they'll run it again. This one to Tommy K and nothing going. Yeah. 
Matt, Esau Mello does have the weapons to get back into this game, though. There's no doubt oh, about yeah. that. As you can see, Kennedy rolls, throws, completes it to Fizzino. He's looking to Fizzino a lot tonight. Yeah, Fizzino and Taft are both big targets for Devin Kennedy. Seems to be moving the ball pretty well on this drive. Third and three for the Spartans. Barnes looking to convert this third down play. And a timeout is going to be called. And the Spartans are going to talk it over. Well, Matt, we are not the only people covering the game. Obviously, you have the Republican. But ESPN Boston is here tonight. And uh, John McKirk is writing for ESPN Boston. He'll be covering this game. He said this is one of the five highlighted games on the board for ESPN Boston and that definitely got the players hyped up when they found yep. out about it. But I, it's got to be one of the first times he saw football has been covered by ESPN Boston. Uh, maybe a few years back when they had Chris Sedian and everybody but yep. Thank you, band. Did you time that? <laughs> All right, so third and three. Pitch to the left. Islam Meadows got the first down, and they got more. Tanner Frazino is going to try to score. Tries to cut in. Is going to be tackled. Excellent run by Tanner Frazino on third down. That was a must-needed run by Islam Meadow. I'll tell you what, Frazino's having a big night. Yep. He's been getting a lot of touches tonight, and you really didn't see that the uh, last two games. First and goal for East Long Meadow. I believe it's the third time they've been in the red zone tonight. Yep. Haven't been able to convert, but uh, this is definitely a good opportunity here. Fizzino in motion again. Kennedy hands it to Kay, and it's going to be some yellow laundry down on the field. And Matt, if you think about it, if they score at those other two times, and we probably wouldn't be in this situation because, you know, you never know how things work out. But if they scored in those two times and we were here again, the score is 21-14. Right. And we're looking to tie it. Yep. They've had uh, several opportunities to score so far tonight, but uh, haven't been able to convert yet. And, and really, Matt, say we go on the, the halftime, 21-7, 28-7, whatever the case may be. East Almighty's just got to think, okay, the second quarter has to be ours. I mean the second, the second half, half right, yeah, right. excuse me, second half has to be ours. Just restart the game, really. Right. Kay in the backfield, joined by a few others as Kennedy goes to his right, throws to the end zone, it's going to be picked off by the Golden Eagles. And let's see if he can go all the way. He's got one man to beat, he'll beat him. It will be 27-0 Central off a pick six by number one. Juan, Juan, excuse me, Juan Williams, the cousin of Cody Williams. Uh, and that's a deflating <laughs> pick wow, six. That's tough. That is very tough. Juan Williams with the pick six to make it 27 nothing. Golden Eagles. And uh, you can only imagine what Esau Metal is thinking right now. See Ryan Taft on the bench, had his head down for a few moments. James Griffin, same thing, has his head down on the bench. And uh, Juan Williams will be kicking his own PAT. He's been successful all night. And he has four for four. I 
a 98-yard interception for a touchdown by Jawan Williams. You still got 6.45 left in the second quarter and you still have a whole nother half to play. You, you know, anything can happen. You, you can't rule this game out just yet. Um, it doesn't look good for East Lama, that's for sure. But this game isn't the fourth quarter either. Yes, Do you know right. what I mean? It's yep. not 28 nothing with 6.45 left in the fourth quarter. Still got no, a whole other half to play. Just need to convert on the chances they're given. That's all they need to do. Three men back to receive for East Long Meadow. Good kick by Central right down the middle. It'll be returned by Mikey Magipinto. Who's got a hole, and he's still fighting for some more yards, and a good return by Mikey Magipinto to get it past the 30-yard line. Speaking of Central, Matt, remember that basketball game we called during uh, last winter, and I believe it was a Friday night, and yep. it was still hyped up, and we went for three quarters, and then at the end, we just kind of fell off the ship. Yeah, almost won that game. They were leading after three. I remember that. And we were leading. No, we weren't leading comfortably, but. <laughs> Kennedy drops back. Goes to the sideline, Fazino again, makes a man miss, and is going to be wrapped up by a sea of Golden Eagles. So second and ten. Ball around the 32-yard line. Hands up the middle, Mikey Manja Pinto. Gets a few, and it'll be third down for Easton on middle. So third and five for Easton on middle. Kennedy up the middle again, and Easton is going to be stopped way short. And uh, let's see if Easton on sends the punting team out. And it looks like they will. Five and a half to go for the first half of this one. It's 28-0 central lead right now. Ethan Young will be punting it off for the Spartans. And a good punt by Ethan, wow. Man. Returned by number four, Trevor Moreau. Moreau makes a few people miss, but gets to around the 20 yard line. Excuse me, that's Troy Moreau. All right, so first and 10 for the Golden Eagles. They lead by 28. Hand up up the middle. Jawan Williams gets swallowed up before the first, first yard line. Well, coming into tonight in the double A standings, or the AA standings, Putnam and Esau Meadow are at the top. Then it goes west side, Chog, Westfield, and then Long Meadow is one and one. Then Holyoke at zero and one, and Central at zero and one. 
You know, Matt, with this whole realignment of the MIAA, I, I criticize this one point. Why is Central in the same division or conference or league, you could say, as East Salmetto if they're going by school size? Yeah, I don't understand that either. I mean, what is the population of Central? Got to be 2,000 kids, right? Right. And we're not even pushing 1,000 in our school, so I don't really understand it doesn't make how sense. How they're going by school size, because it doesn't make sense to me, but uh and flag down, it's gonna be a false start. Uh, false start on the Golden Eagles. Now we got a full moon tonight. Look straight ahead. You see that you oh, see yeah. that tree? Yep. Isn't that supposed to mean something? Isn't that like a myth when a full moon comes out? Bad luck? I don't, I don't know. know I didn't. I have no idea. You have no idea? We'll have to look that up. Can we have someone look that All up? All the monsters come out at night. Yeah. That's what happens. <laughs> and the monsters are the central golden eagles. Let me tell you that. Cody Williams runs out of bounds. Yeah, certainly not. Full moon isn't uh, providing any luck for you, Salmetto. But again, still another half of football to be played. Got to stay positive. Tell you what, our, our camera girl, Jamie Rook, must be happy. All right, so second and second and nine. This should be third and nine. No, second and nine. They switched it. And Central not getting much. All right, so third down. Big stop here. Get the ball back before the half ends. Chance to get a nice score in before the half, and which to me seems like uh, it must happen. They need to get a score in before the first half. Yeah, I, ends, I would yeah. agree. Yeah. You know, so that, that would be one positive to take out of the first half and to transfer over to the second half if they could put up a score here when they get the ball back, or if they get the ball back. Pick six would be nice. Yeah, there's going to be some stop in the action. It's going to be a timeout central with 2.58 left to play in the first half. Tell you what, Matt, when we were in Amherst last week, we saw this kid. His name is Taj Amir Torres. Uh, he's being recruited by UMass, BC, and UConn, and the kid can wow. fly. He had the, I believe he had the two touchdowns for Amherst, and uh, I just I think he's one of the more underrated players in the Western Mass area. And if you guys can go, go out and get a chance to see him, he's a phenomenal athlete. He won the Gatorade uh, State of Massachusetts uh, Player of the Year Award, I believe, last year. I'm not sure. But uh, definitely uh, racking up a lot of awards and accomplishments for Taj Amir Torres. Really the only weapon the uh, Amherst Hurricanes have. So it'll be third and seven. Ball inside the central half. Cody Williams in the shotgun formation. He saw middle bringing a blitz. Williams over the middle. It's going to be wow. caught. Nice right. catch. Yeah, Malik, Malik Johnson. Yeah, that's his uh, central's underrated player in my mind. That definitely makes a huge impact. What do you think Coach Maurer, Coach Raymond, you know, Coach Martin, Coach Baker, Coach Conlon, what are they going to say to the uh, Spartans? In I'm not sure, to be honest with you. I know not many coaches are very happy with their performance probably so far this half, but... Um, you know, if there was any positive to take from it, I would say that they only allowed seven points in the second quarter rather than the 21 points they allowed in the first three minutes of the first quarter. So that is definitely a positive to take out of it. All right, Matt. Well, since we have a time uh, to talk a little bit here freely, we're going to do the halftime uh, trivia question uh, before halftime approaches. On September 20th, 1933, an NFL team played their first game in their history. 
originally they had a baseball team name to start off with, but now, but since 1940, they, that's when they changed their name. Uh, so now they have a football name. What team is it? And if you get this wrong, I'm going to be very disappointed in you. Now, we have a uh, Jason Cloutier back here. He's got the iPhone, so maybe he'll start uh, researching that question. Jason, kind enough to be up here every week for East Long Metal Football to help us out. And it's going to be a screen. And Central's got a lot of... A lot of openings in front of them, and it will be a touchdown for the Golden Eagles. Number four, Troy Moreau. And uh, Central starting to run away with it now. And this one is coming back. Wow, okay, that, that's good news. A break for East Long Meadow, let me tell you that. Wow. What appeared to be a 52 yard touchdown pass is now coming back. And a holding penalty. Wow. So East Long Meadow catching a break here. Central still in the shotgun formation. 228 left in the first half. All right, up the middle. Central, they have an opening. That's Malik Johnson, and he's going to be tackled out of bounds. He still gets the first down, but here comes another flag. Uh, Malik Johnson definitely having a great night. Looks like the flag was thrown after the play. Late hit? Possibly. Uh, a lot of East Long Meadow fans shaking their heads. Some are even leaving. Not a good sign. And this game was, I mean, since the beginning of the year, for people who follow East Long Meadow closely since the summer, and uh, for all the students for the past couple days have been looking up, you know, for this game, really. It's going to be a personal foul on East Long Meadow. So that'll move the chains a ton for Central. As they're looking to strike again, leading by 28. Malik Johnson has it, and he's going to get a few. And close to the first down line, but he's not going to get it. Matt, would you like me to repeat the trivia question? Or you can see it here. But I don't have the answer down, obviously, but you can always read it. But. You can repeat it one more time for the people at home right now. All right, we'll do it right after this uh, play here by Central with under two minutes left. It'll be second and three. Cody Williams will draw up the middle by himself, and he's going to go to the corner of the end zone for another Central TD. Cody Williams making it 34 nothing. in favor of the Golden Eagles. Well, it'll take a miracle to come back. And if it does, maybe we'll do the famous Al Michaels do believe a miracles call off a of Hail Mary. Wouldn't that be spectacular? <laughs> I don't know why they do this on the uh, field goals. When they sw Never seen that before. And the kick is up, and it is good. So for all of you watching at home, I will repeat the question. On September 20th, 1933, an NFL team played their first game in their history. Originally, they had a baseball team name to start off with, but that changed uh, during the year of 1940. What team is it? And it is, it is one of the most historic teams in the NFL history. It's not, it, it's a very well-known team. A team that has a lot of, you know, a lot of fans all around the country. Arguably the biggest fan base. Well, no, I wouldn't say that, but close. 
I have a pretty good idea who it is. Yeah, I think you do. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Matt, uh, so uh, Michigan, Connecticut tomorrow night. For all of you that don't know, yep. Matt is a huge UConn fan. I remember the him in UConn fan. 2011 when uh, I always – the Huskies aren't going to win the NCAA tournament. You know, they keep yeah. winning, they keep winning, and I keep saying, no, they're not, and boom, they beat Butler. Uh, so, Matt, how are you feeling about uh, the Wolverines going to Rentschler? I have no idea. I mean, <laughs> they're 0-2 to start the season off. Uh, not the best of all college football teams. I'm sure many of you know that. And Another muffs return by Islam Meadow. Let's see who got on it first. That always changes on the ground. It'll stay with Islam Meadow. You know, I've never seen that before. The ball was laid down on its side. It appeared the ball was laid down on its side, and they kicked it. So it had a backspin to it. Wow. And that's why you saw it have a backspin. In that is, I've never yeah, seen that before. No, I haven't either. I didn't even see it laying down. And I don't understand why they would do that. I don't see why I really... Was it laid down to start off with, or did it fall down? No, I saw it laid down from the start, and I didn't wow. know if that was uh, if it got blown over. Hmm. But apparently it was their intention. I didn't even know, to be honest with you, that was illegal. Yeah, that's right. I I, I don't know. Usually, And they can't. kicked it weird, so it had a backspin on it. It was very tough to handle. But luckily, Song Metal will get the ball. With 1.38 to go. Kennedy going deep. He's got a man, and it's going to just be out of the reach. Um, I believe that is Ryan Taft, who yep. they uh, that uh, duo has connected a lot this year, but uh, couldn't do it that time. It's a good look by Devin Kennedy. Just a little bit too much on it. Well, uh, Spartanville has still stayed faithful. Every seat in the student section is still filled, and they're still standing. Handoff up the middle, and nothing going for Esau Meadow as Andrew Frappier can't get much on the play. Just over a minute here in the first half, 35 nothing. Spartans trail. It'll be third and 10, ball inside the Esau Meadow 50. And Kennedy goes over the middle, and lucky that wasn't picked. And flag is thrown in the backfield. So let's see if this is roughing the passer. Yeah, Devin Kennedy's been roughed up a couple times tonight with the big central D line. Roughing the passer, yep. So it's an automatic first down. and a 15-yard penalty. So that moves him to, I believe, exactly at the 50-yard line, yep. looks like. They have 47 seconds to march these 50 yards. And they have plenty of timeouts to work with. And that's thrown over the middle to a tight end free song, Meadow. Riley Held, the son of the Western Mass sports writer legend Russ Held. He's seen a few uh, completions this year. He had a few in Amherst. He's only a sophomore, so he's yep. somehow has a few more years with him as Kennedy goes all the way, and it's going to be out of the reach of Taft. And uh, Matt, also the, uh, the Red Sox can clinch. The, uh, oh, AL, yes. the AL East. Oh, no, yep. they can clinch. Yes, the, the AL yeah, East. The tonight, East, right. yep. They've already clinched the, clinched the playoffs last night. Great. Don't worry. You know, when you guys get swept by the uh, Detroit and the ALCS, and the Yankees are playing on October uh, 2nd, AL okay. Wildcard, baby. They're going to be playing. Let's see. I don't know. But here's Mikey Magipinto, and he nice gets run. a good game. Now, the Yankees are going to be playing. Let's see. I think they're going to be, be playing Texas. Oh, yeah? Mariano's going to get there. They're going to get Mariano there. Speaking right. of which, uh, Andy Pettit re announced his retirement today. Right. Slowly but surely, Derek Jeter will. Obviously, Jorge Posada did a few years back. So just over 10 seconds left here in the first half. 
He still knows at the 27 yard line. Kennedy drops back, looking for a man. Goes deep, and it's gonna be incomplete. Deflected. 6.7 seconds to go. Probably just enough to get one play. Possibly yeah. two. Yeah, you know, I think they're just going to air it out. I mean, they could try to get the screen right. and call timeout or go to the out of bounds, but. I tell you what, man, we can smell those burgers all the way up, yeah. all the way up here. It's going to be hard getting down there. It's like a New York City traffic jam of people down there, but. Looks like the Cross Bronx Expressway here in yeah. Spartans Field. <laughs> All right, so just looks like it's enough for one more play for the Spartans. They'll air it out to the end zone to Richard, and Richard will. It's off his hands. 1.1 1 .1 seconds yeah, they're left. Gonna, <laughs> one more play. <laughs> That's probably the best look they've had. And, yeah, they're going to have more time for one more play. Chance to get into the end zone here. Matt, your, your first half thoughts on both sides of the ball. Well, yeah, I think it's pretty clear that Central is dominating the game so far, no question about it. Um, you know, they start off first three possessions, uh, three touchdowns on three plays, and they force three turnovers just to start off the game. So that, I think, hurt East Long Meadow the most. But then, uh, you know, East Long Meadow slowed the tempo down. They got the offense rolling a little bit. Uh, they couldn't manage to come up with a score. But uh, I believe they still uh, did a pretty decent job of, you know, maintaining possession and controlling the football until uh, Central came back in the second quarter with two more touchdowns of their own to make it a 35 nothing lead. And for Central, they are ranked third in West, uh, excuse me, first in Western Mass and sixth in the state. Right. What are you seeing from the Golden Eagles? I mean, they look pretty flawless. Yeah, they're looking very outstanding today. I mean, we're going to send it down to her at halftime. It's going to be the last play. Kennedy to the end zone, incomplete. And that's going to do it for the first half with the Golden Eagles leading 35 0. And as we go into halftime, we're going to send it down to the Elkhart Sports sideline reporter, Ariel Vernadakis. Ariel? Hi, I'm Ariel Vernadakis here reporting with Elkhart Sports. Tonight I'm here with Coach Conlon. Coach, there's three fumbles in the first minute of the and a pick six in the first second quarter. What um, do you think the team was a little bit anxious going into that game? We were anxious. I thought we were ready. I thought we were prepared. But, uh, you know, sometimes those things happen. Uh, we, we spotted them points in the first minute. And then, uh, you know, we've had some good offensive drives. We just haven't been able to put the ball in the end zone. And, uh, and they got a pick six and they, um, you know, one touchdown. So it's, you know, we're... We're hanging in there, but uh, you know we're in a we're in a big hole, and we know it. So we're going to have to just come back in the second half and, and really play some good football, like we we can do it. So uh, hopefully we will. East Long Meadow did a good job of moving the ball around the field tonight. What message do you have for the team for the second half? Well, we have to relax. We have to put that behind us, the first half behind us, and we have to play football like we're capable of playing, and uh, put some scores on the board and. Uh, and, and make it a second, you know, make it a good game in the second half. That's what we're gonna, that's what we're gonna preach in, in at halftime. All right, thank, thank you. you. Good thank luck you. in the second half. This game brought to you in part by the Pizza Shop home of the legendary dough, the pizza shop on Shaker Road in East Long Meadow. After you're done with the pizza shop, head on over to Let's Yo for a yogurt experience. North Main Street in East Long Meadow. Fans, follow us on Twitter. Follow all your East Long Meadow sports by using our handle at LCAT Sports for all of East Long Meadow's high school sports scores and updates at LCAT Sports. All right, we're about ready to start the second half of action here with East Long Meadow trailing 35 nothing to the Central Golden Eagles. And uh, Matt, to start off things, what is your uh, trivia question answer? 
you know, my guess, just being, you know, logical about this, I'm going <laughs> to say it's, I'm going to guess the Pittsburgh Steelers. Yes, and, and the reason you're being yep. logical is because when I said you should get this. That uh, kind of gave yeah. it away, <laughs> Steelers being my favorite football team. Sorry, you Patriots fans, but uh, Steelers are the best team of all time. I don't know. <laughs> Come on, man. We're going <laughs> to. We might get some tweets at Elcat Sports uh, not agreeing with that uh, statement you just No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but uh, uh, speaking of Elcat Sports, you can follow Elcat Sports. Our our handle, uh, I believe that's what it's called, uh, is at Elcat Sports. Uh, I believe we're at 84. So, hey, you know, if you're the 100th follower, you can do a game with us. How about that? How about that? You're the 100th follower on Twitter. You can do a broadcast with us. That's our prize. I just made up on that up on the fly as well. I like Ar it. <laughs> All right, so we saw Meadow about ready to start the second half, kicking off the central. And we're off. And it's going to be a good kick by East Long Meadow. Returned by a Central Golden Eagle who has room. That is Troy Moreau who gets past the 50-yard line. And that, you know, Central really hasn't, yep. even with halftime, nice they're, st they're still strong. Right out of the gate. Nice return to set up. Good field position for the Golden Eagles. Matt, what do you like from Central? What, what do you see that really, you know, are, could they get back to Western Mass for the Super Bowl? They beat Long Meadow last year. You I know? think they could easily. This very strong Central team. Handoff off to the left side. That's Moreau, and he gets stopped by three East Long Meadow defenders and into East Long Meadow territory. 21 yard carry, which has pretty much been the story tonight for Central. Offensively dominated game. But we still have an old, a whole other half to play. Here's a screen pass off to the left. That's Juwan Williams, yep. cousin to cousin. And there another first down. All right, so first and 10, Golden Eagles. They've been in this territory a lot tonight. Fake handoff, Cody Williams around the right side, and he's going to try to stretch it in. He's going to be out of bounds just short of the end zone. And uh, Matt, during halftime when we were going around and walking around socializing, we saw the fire alarm went off in the school, and both yeah. teams had to be uh, evacuated from the school. I've never seen that in yeah, any college. very odd. Anything, yeah. No college, professional, anything. I've never seen that. All right, so Cody Williams under center. He's got three men in the backfield. Hands it to number 45. He's in. That is Marcel Davis with the TD. So another touchdown for the Golden Eagles. And it looks like Tanner Patterson is limping off the field. Yeah, the senior defensive back shaking up there, as you said, Matt. Not good for East Long Meadow. Neither is being down 41 nothing. He's yeah. perfect for uh, extra points tonight. Six for six. Yeah, I believe that's Juwan Williams who, do, who kicks the PATs for the Golden Eagles. Not a fun night for East Long Meadow, to say the least. No, definitely, lot, definitely not, but still. They still want to play the hardest until the end of the game. They want to give it their all and see what they can, you know, do here. Well, Matt, some East Long Meadow players and Central players are being on the watch list for the Dejeuner Award, and I believe that's an offensive award because I only see offensive players. Cody Williams leads it, and then Juwan Williams is in fourth. And uh, East Summino has some players in the honor roll uh, mentions with Mikey Magipinto and Devin Kennedy, and Central also has Daquan Clemens. 
Tajamir Torres is in eighth place right now. TJ Fitzel, we saw him in week one, is in 10th place. Mike Vicarelli is in sixth, the Aguam QB. Again, three men back to return for East Salmetto. 11.09 left in the third quarter. Short kick by Central. And this is going to be returned by Magic Pinto. And he's got a lane. He keeps going. He's going to be tackled around the 43-44 yard line. So nice job by Mikey Magic Pinto getting outside. Picking up more than... He should have had a couple missed tackles by Central. Mikey Magipinto gets it up to the 42-yard line. I tell you what, I know someone who's really not happy. That's Polly. Polly's not happy about this. No, he's not happy. <laughs> I'm sure most of the Spartans are not happy, but uh, again, he still have another half to play. Let's see what they can do here. Hand off left side and knock by him behind the line of scrimmage. Tanner Fizzino on the carry. Now, Matt, we haven't seen John Bortolucci in We've a lot of seen as much great. Do you think that's an uh, injury? I'm not sure, to be honest. We've seen him um, on the defensive side tonight, and we've seen him on the return team. But the, the, he hasn't been on the offensive side, as we see Kennedy roll out, finds a man, completes it to Riley Held, and that's going to be good for a first down. Riley Held, again, the sophomore. can be a big piece for the East Long Meadow offense in the, ups in the upcoming years. And ball's muffed again. And they're going to say... And a flag. flag, oh yeah. But well, Matt, they blew the whistle, then they blew the... F and that I'm not really sure what's going to be the call here. It's, it's going to be a personal foul. Um, it, it was a late hit. It okay. wasn't. It wasn't roughing the passer because the ball was dead. Down. Okay. Um, That's what I was confused about. What? What do they call it? Call it roughing the passer. But since the ball was down, right. It's considered a late hit. That that does make sense. And uh, East Long Meadow uh, will go up the field as the uh, chains will move off the penalty of the Golden Eagles. And uh, as you can see on the bench, you can see a referee is injured. I remember last year, Sam Blake's going up a slant. Well, if the, he's going up a slant, and he decks a referee, and the referee just went down. I believe it was Sam Blake. I'm not sure. And here's a hand up at the middle. That's Tommy Kay with a good uh, run there for East Lamino, trying to spark some life into East Lamino offense. Still uh, a good crowd here at East Lamino. Student section has shrunk a little bit, but still three-quarters of the way filled. Hand up the middle again to Kay, who gets enough for the first down. Hand off off the middle. And Nacho Pinto's fighting for whatever he can get. Well, East Lamento does have a bye week next week, so they'll have plenty of time to game plan for their next game as Kennedy rolls to his right, fires and incomplete off the hands of Ryan Taft, who couldn't retrieve it. Yeah, it was knocked out. Of his hands yeah, by number one, Juwan Williams. Juwan Williams, he's got to have two touchdowns tonight. Yeah. He had that pick six, a big pick six in this game. Really changed the momentum of this game. And there's going to be some whistles blown on the field. There's going to be a timeout. 
Central. So Matt, what do you think about the Dodgers? Okay, the they, Dodgers. They, they clinched the NL West, right? And uh, yep. this isn't just a baseball debate. This is just a sports debate. Uh, after they clinched the NL West in uh, Arizona yesterday, they jumped into the pool at Chase Field in center field. Disrespectful yeah. or just fun? No, I, I think that's completely disrespectful, to be honest with Me you. Me too. Yeah. I mean, they clinch the division, and then they go celebrate <coughs> in their right. opponent's right. pool in center field. I just think that's ridiculous. Here's a pass complete to Riley Held, his third reception of the night, and gets a good gain. Completely agree, but I just wanted to get your opinion on that. I mean, you don't do that. No, you no. don't. I mean, Vince Scully, the uh, Hall of Fame broadcaster, can't be very uh, pleased with that, being that he is a class act in his, I believe, 64th season. He's coming back for his 65th next year at 84 years young. The great Vince Scully. 84 years young. Timeout on the field. Uh, talk about a legend in this industry, huh? Went to Fordham University. Started off with the Brooklyn Dodgers with Jackie Robinson. Wow. Tell you what, I like the cheeseburgs. Those yeah. were good. Oh yeah, those were. <laughs> Food's always great here. <laughs> those, those are, those are decent. Nice touch. <laughs> nice touch. <laughs> All right, Kennedy under center. 8:40 left in the third quarter. Kennedy looking to the sideline, getting some redirections. Look, looks over again. And a pitch to the right. That's Ethan Young. Oh, my goodness, did he get leveled. And Juwan uh, Williams again on the stop. Wow. So Central take over on downs. And, uh, Matt, you can see that full moon has uh, moved up behind the, uh, yep. behind the tree. Would you go to the moon if you had the opportunity? <laughs> That's a very weird question, Tom. Hey. I, it's I a very reasonable you know question. It's a very odd question, but since we're talking about it, it could be I asked. would say, why not? <laughs> why not? All right, Cody Williams has got two men in the <laughs> He's got two men in the backfield. Hands up the middle. Good stop by East Long Middle defense. Richard Yukalakaranya with the stop. Can you spell ukulele around you? Tom, I don't think anyone but him can. Well, I think he just puts UK like. I don't even think UK. <laughs> <laughs> is it longer than Salta Lamakia? I don't know. That is a good question. That is a good question. Actually, I saw someone in the stands wearing a salty jersey. I yep. love how I love John, how it has to John Curley. Yeah, give yep. him a shout out. I love how uh, it has to go over. What does he wear? Number 36, 38, something like that? 39. 39. He, he has to go over the 39. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it has it's to, the longest has the bag, name yeah. on the back of a jersey. <laughs> uh, more and more fans start to filter out. Definitely a disappointing night here in East Long Meadow. They trail 42 0. And uh, it's been central all game, even though East Lamino has had some bright spots earlier. They were not able to capitalize on any, any of them. Second and ten for the Golden Eagles. Williams pitches it to his left. And the ball comes out, but it looks like he was down. Down, yep. This game is brought to you in part by the Pizza Shop, home of the famous and legendary dough. That's the Pizza Shop. <laughs> And after you're done eating at the pizza shop, you go over to Let's Yo. Oh, yeah. Have a good experience. Yep. And then after that, you can go on a nice jog. <laughs> 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 and 
And here is Central here getting a good gain by number four, Troy Moreau. He's had a lot of good runs. Yep, marching down the field again. And it'll be first down for the Golden Eagles. Cheerleaders remain hope. Seem like they have some hope left in them. Yeah. <laughs> All right, here's Troy Moreau again, and he's going to be blown up in the backfield by Islam. I don't. And uh, the senior captain, lineman Brennan Logan, with the stop. I tell you what, Islam and Osaka, Matt Mooney. That was a really yep. good year. I think he already has 11 goals. That's unbelievable. That is. I mean, how many games? They've played three, four, five? I'm not sure. You've called some of their games, and uh, right. you've seen Matt Mooney play, and that's going to be passed to the side. Nice nice tackle by Isla Meadow there on the right side of the field. Or excuse me, left side, but right in our perspective. So Ethan Young with the stop. But on the other side of the pitch, uh, the girls' soccer have been some trouble. They've been a powerhouse the past few years here in Western Mass. As we see Williams drop back, fakes one way, goes the other, finds Moreau, one of his favorite targets of the night. He's got a hole, and he's got more, and he's going to have another touchdown. There he goes. There he goes. He's at the 10, and he's in the end zone for another Golden Eagles touchdown. Troy Moreau, one of the favorite targets tonight for Cody Williams, who again has committed to Monmouth. Right. Well, it's all going to look like he's someone who's going to go to 2-1. and one. And we haven't hit the fourth quarter yet, but it's been a tough one, Matt, to say the least. Kick is up, and kick is good. 49 Central, they lead with 5.43 left in the third quarter, and we're going to take a quick break to give a shout-out to our sponsors. This game brought to you in part by The Pizza Shop, home of the legendary dough, The Pizza Shop on Shaker Road, in East Long Meadow. After you're done with the pizza shop, head on over to Let's Yo for a yogurt experience. North Main Street in East Long Meadow. All right, we're back. East Long Meadow trails 49 nothing, but we do have a special guest here in the El Cat booth tonight. We are joined by Sam Blake, Showtime, and also known as SB1K. Sam, how you doing? Everything's good, man. Everything's good. I'm waiting to go back to school tomorrow, and I came on here to see my boys. And uh, how are you doing at Williston? How you got? How's the team looking? Williston is uh is promising. We got we got a lot of good things going for us right now. Um, our offense is really strong, and um, you know we're running more of an up tempo, you know, no huddle kind of offense, kind of simulate Oregon's offense. And um, yeah, and our, our defense, we're 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 really we're really strong. We're stacked. We we got depth in every position. So um, I'm I'm excited. Are the uniforms at school as Oregon? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. I wish, man. I wish, but uh, I mean they're decent. It's, it's whatever. And uh, you've been here the whole night, and you've seen this is, you know, this is not a good performance by Islam. What are you thinking about how they're performing tonight? What do they have to do? They go into a bye week, but what do they have to do in the next two weeks to get back? Um, after after a loss like this, I know personally, uh, you know, you just got to get your mentality back. You got to get you got to get back in groove. Uh, Forty nine to zero at home in front of in front of in front of your friends and family is never a good thing. But um, I, I just I think I just think it's. I just think it's confidence. You know, you got to get your confidence back uh, and get back in your stride. You know what I mean? Uh, and bounce back after a bye week. That that should be good for him. Another bye week. As you can see, a nice run by Tanner Vizino. Have you? No, have you? Is this the first East Summer game you've seen this season? Yeah, it is. It is. Uh, Devin Kennedy looked really poised. He looked really poised tonight, but uh, a lot of fumbles hurting Islam. And as you can see here, he's going to go deep. He's trying to find Rizzo Yukon but 
And he's not going to be able to do so. And does Sam used to run that route a lot for Danny McGuill. <laughs> that was the money route right there. That was a connection. That was an automatic touchdown right there. <laughs> uh, and, you know, last year, I can't remember the score of the Central game, but kind of the same outcome. 49-7. to And they're up 49-0 here. Yeah. Uh, it's tough. I mean, Central Central, Central's a really good team. Uh, stacked at all positions. Lots of good athletes uh, as far as skill players. And uh, they're confident. That's that's the biggest thing I'll say about Central. They're confident. And when you're confident with athletes who can perform and you believe you can win every game, there's, there's nobody who can really stop you. Well, me and Matt were saying before the game, maybe they're w coming into the game in our pregame, maybe they're going to be too overconfident, and that's where you summon them with other You can see the stellar sophomore Mikey Magipinto fighting hard. and uh, But... Well, first, well, let's start with the Central. You know, did you think that, too, that some teams could come in overconfident and then actually lose? I mean, it's definitely possible where you can come in overconfident. I mean, you overlook a team. Like, if you see a team on your schedule, overlook it like, oh, that's a W. That always happens. There's always games like that where you can be overconfident and come out and take take a humongous loss. That's how upsets happen. But, um, but yeah, over, overconfident, that, that's, definitely, that's definitely a killer. All right, Kennedy looking, and he tr fumbles the ball again. And uh, he's somehow luckily to recover it. And uh, we see a lot of runs from Mikey Machpinto. You played with uh, Mike Machpinto. What are you seeing from him? Mike is a strong runner. He's a bull. Um, he really doesn't care. He really does not care about who he's playing against, you know, who's on the other side of that ball. Um, really quick, really athletic, really fast, and just kind of a hard hat, you know, blue-collar worker kind of guy. He works really hard. And, um, you know, seeing guys like that fight in games like this that are 49-0 that aren't, aren't, aren't aren't going in your way. Uh, it's always good to see see stuff like that. Somebody else sends another man in motion. Handoff up the middle. Here's Mikey Magipinto as we were just talking about him and gets a good game. Uh, now, Sam, I got a question for you. Uh, what is the, the intensity level? What's the difference between high school and college? Uh, just right, like intensity or just the level of play? What's the difference? The intensity level is, is definitely turned up a bit. Um, you know, because it's not only you're fighting for spots, you're fighting to keep your coach employed, you know what I mean? That's your yeah. coach's job. Uh, you know, he has to feed his family somehow. So, I mean, you fight, you, you realize that the game is, you're playing it for more than yourself, you know right. what I mean? So, yeah. I mean, it's a lot, it feels like a lot more pressure on your shoulders. But once you get to that level, you've already been dealing with pressure. So, you know how to deal with it. And uh, it's not that big of a difference. Now, Matt uh, and Sam, we just had some breaking news here. Uh, the sports director, uh, Tony Centinella Velcat, just told me that John Bertolucci has a broken collarbone, I believe, and uh, Matt. You've out, we've, and here's another pick and another turnover, but on John, John Bartolucci, Matt, that's a blow. That is a blow. I, I mean, mean, they do have a slate of running backs, but. Right, I mean, Bortles a big component to their offense. Uh, he's established that uh, through the first two games of the season, and yet uh, now he's a broken collarbone, and uh, that's their running game's going to suffer a little bit. Yeah, that's what we think. That's what uh, Tony said. You never know till the actual thing. But, oh, okay, uh, all right. That's what we're assuming here. Um, I'm sure he's right, obviously, but. That would definitely be a blow if they lost John to a broken collarbone. That's something you can't come back from in the same season. So, um, yeah, that's definitely a tough loss. I mean, they do have Magic Pinto. They, they used Fizzino a lot tonight. Um, but still, he was one of the more elusive running backs here. You know, and that's, uh, that, you know, that's bad. That's in his senior season. Yeah, his senior know? leader, man. You, you can't replace that leadership. So we don't always have to talk uh, high school football or anything like that. How about the uh, Cowboys? <laughs> the Chiefs. My boys, man, they let me down again. We always lose one. We always lose one or two games a year that we're supposed to win. But uh, te terrible, terrible clock management last game against the Chiefs. But uh, hopefully we'll bounce back. Another nine and seven season with no playoffs. Or? Nah, nah, nah. That's not happening. I see. I see a division win this year. We, we, we're going we're gonna to get the Giants twice this year. Kevin Conner would uh, disagree. Uh, nah, man, nah. We, we, we got the Giants this year. We got the Giants number. We got the Redskins number. I think the Eagles will be our biggest competition this year in the conference. Uh, see a little pause in the action on the field. We're about ready to resume play. East Seminole trails 49 0 with 3.35 left. Again, I'm Tom Cronin, joined alongside Matt Domenico and Sam Blake, a former two sport athlete here at East Lamedo. So have you looked at any colleges? Yeah, um, I'm actually being heavily recruited by University of Albany, University of Connecticut, uh, Fordham University, Syracuse University. Uh, 
Villanova, and then there's Assumption for some D2 schools. But uh, but yeah, uh, they got they got to come out and see me play sometime. So I'm really looking forward to it. They're definitely top-notch school. Speaking of UConn, we were talking about that earlier. Matt uh, is a big UConn fan. That fan they play uh, Michigan tomorrow yeah, night. Big game tomorrow oh. night. And run up the middle here by Central. And but they're going to speaking of UConn, Bryce McAllister, and he saw Meadow. Former athlete, or in, uh, also played at uh, Suffield Academy, has just committed there as well. Yeah, I'm, look, I'm looking forward to the opportunity. If I if I get to play with Bryce, man, that's that's a, that's a combo many teams really won't have an answer for. You know, that's a powerful runner and a powerful receiver, and uh, that that'll be exciting to watch for you. And watch us Huskies yeah. go to work <laughs> if, if it happens, though. If it happens, trying out for the basketball team under uh, Kevin Ollie, or <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't know if I can play basketball at that level, but uh, I mean, if I got a shot, I'll definitely try. Central hands it off up the middle. They have a new quarterback. Ball comes out. Looks like Eastamano falls on it. Calm down. Oh, they're going to calm down? Yep. Okay. New quarterback is Aaron Williams, the 5'11", 175 junior. And speaking of UConn, their basketball team is going to have a pretty strong season as well this year. So uh, <laughs> I'm looking forward to they that. eligible this year? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to talk about that right now. <laughs> Uh, speaking of basketball, uh, Coach Youssef leaving after one year did an yeah. excellent job. W what was it like playing under Coach Youssef? Coach Youssef, man, he was an amazing coach. Just to have a coach who knows how you want to play and who knows he's, he's not going to force you to play, you know, some style that you really don't want to play. And um, I think I think his management of the game was really superb. Like you saw in a couple games, I think it was a long medal game. At the end of the game, we was missing free throws. Yep. And, uh, you know, they had a couple buckets there at the end. And he put the full court press on just to stop the momentum. And that's like that there's little things like that that he does that certain coaches don't do that uh really set him apart in my eyes. And uh he I think our team responded well to his, to him coming here. Yeah, Coach Youssef is now at LIU Brooklyn, who Matt, uh your big NCAA tournament uh, bracket guy. They yeah. made the tournament last year, right? As a sixteen seed or didn't they make uh, the tournament? Yeah, they did, yeah. yep. They made a play in game. A pl okay. Yeah. Hand off up the middle for the Golden Eagles and nothing doing good for stick, them. Good stick, good stick. And uh, how is your brother George doing? He's at yeah, he's doing he's doing fine. Um, he's up there at North Mount Herman playing fullback and middle linebacker. I don't know if you heard, but oh, he's uh, on, okay, yeah, playing fullback. Uh, he's loving it. Um, the other day in the scrimmage, he had like nine carries for forty nine yards. So wow. I mean, I got him a little bit. Yo, pick them numbers up. But <laughs> he's, he's doing he's doing all right though. I'm I'm happy for him. I'm proud of him. Uh, they open up tomorrow. I'm not sure against who, but uh, and yeah, hopefully I get a good report off that. Uh, we're under a minute here in the third quarter. 49 nothing. Central leads. Hand up, up the middle, and he's going to get the first down. He's somehow not being able to complete the tackle before the first down line. And uh, Matt, it's kind of funny that Aaron Williams subbed in for Cody Williams, and then there's a Jawan Williams. There's a <laughs> just a ton of Williams on this team. There's a Tyshawn Williams. I know uh, Aaron Williams and Tyshawn Williams. Their older brother plays for the University of Maine right now, Art Williams. I played with him back in my freshman year at Side Tech in Springfield. Really good receiver. And uh, speaking of Side Tech, uh, tough loss for you guys in the playoffs after winning the Suburban League, uh, going into overtime, uh, not being able to pull that one out. That was that was probably one of the hardest moments in my high school career right there. Um, just to lose the way we did, you know what I mean? Our, our team, I, I feel like our team didn't deserve to lose no, that way, you know what I mean? Good. We had worked so hard, you know, to get to that point, you know, to win that league title. When people said, oh, no, you guys are going to be a bust again, you know what I mean? Just, we had proved so many people wrong already. And to lose like that, you know, I question it every day. I think about it so often. But, um, you know, that, 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 that's just how things happen. You know, there's nothing we can do. I mean, our team did everything we could, and uh, they got a lucky tip in. So, I mean, it happens. And Matt, I remember when the uh, brackets came out. Now, we were an eight or nine seed, I can't remember. And Amherst was a five seed, and I couldn't agree with that at all. Yeah. The fact that we beat them twice right. in our league. <laughs> we won the, the game we won against them the last one was to clinch the division. I mean, I don't know. I, I, saw, I saw them politics, basketball politics, that, I, that I'm not too fond of <laughs> for that specific reason. Williams gives up the middle. And a good stop by Islam at all. Under 20 seconds left. And uh, 
uh, we're under 10 seconds now. East Long Meadow just having overall a uh, unfortunate night. You know, came in really hyped for it. A lot of people still are here, though. The student section has really cleared out Spartanville to our right, but uh, that's going to end the third quarter with East Long Meadow down 49 to nothing to the Central Golden Eagle. Sam, I really, I really appreciate you coming up. Definitely, it's been always a pleasure, a pleasure. calling you. I mean, February 19, 2013. Never <laughs> forget that date. That was Never. a great day. Can't. Uh, you know. It's going to be fun. Uh, predictions for both teams this year. Predictions. Central's looking pretty strong. Um, I might predict a Super Bowl appearance. East Long Meadow, we definitely could get in the playoffs. If we bounce back, if we, if, we learn, if we learn how to bounce back from tough losses like this, you know, to be resilient, to bend but don't break, I think we can definitely make a playoff appearance this year. And uh, when, you make the, when you make the tournament, all bets are off. All records start over, and it doesn't matter what seed you are. So, I mean... Anything can happen. So I'm, I'm, hoping, I'm hoping the best for my boys. I'm hoping. All right, Sam, we really appreciate it. Good luck at Wellston. Definitely. Thanks, man. All right, thank you. Again, we want to thank Sam Blake for joining us here in the booth as we will roll into the fourth quarter. And, uh, Matt, you can kind of see the heads down for Isamino. Yeah, tough game tonight. It almost looks like the South Hadley game switched. Yeah, <laughs> right. Turnover wise, it, yes. And score. Uh, but uh, they're still going to have their chances here in the fourth quarter to make you know at least something happen. Matt, do you uh, do you put in some subs here for you, Um, I it, I it's I a tough I question. Yeah, it is a tough question, but I I would start to give uh some Maybe. underclassmen some yeah. experience here. especially against a team like this. Hit up at the middle, and Richard gets there quickly. Looks like he knew the snap count. And even though he couldn't make the tackle, it was a good, good effort as Central moves it up. And it will be third down. But, uh, what, a, what an athlete Sam Blake was. A pleasure to call him. Yep. Pleasure to call his games during the basketball season with you, during the football season. Uh, overall, great athlete. So is his brother George. And what a season that what what a season uh, East Summit put up in, on the court this past year. Definitely, right. definitely a fun Big season. Big turnaround from last season. Yes, your previous season before that. Williams up the middle. Good gain by number 29, Jatice Bolden. The 5'7", 185 junior with a nice carry. So first and 10, ball at the East Summit 41 yard line. Central has some subs in, taking out their starters as Bolden keeps going and he's got cutting back inside and he's gonna be tackled down. He gets the first down. East Summit did go 5-5 five and five last year. It looks like they're going to go 2-1, and one, but it does still look like a promising season, even though we're assuming it's a broken collarbone to John Bartolucci. Right. Uh, it still does look like a promising season. I mean, Central is not a mediocre team in Western Mass. They are the top dogs. Up the middle again to the fullback. And Central gets a few more yards.
And I think the band just played a little Sports Center uh, uh, beat there. The da -na 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 -na. Sports Center top 10 play, and also what are their famous theme songs in the world of sports? Not quite the best timing for that song, but that's okay. Well, we appreciate John, the band. <laughs> with John McKirk here, you know, ESPN Boston, I get what you mean. But maybe oh, oh, right, 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 yeah. An appreciation for him making the trip down here. Central's got three men in the backfield. No men at the wide receiver position. Williams doing some audibles. Hands it off up the gut to Bolden. Flag down. He keeps going. He just can't go down. And we'll see what the flag is as he does go down. Well, Matt, uh, this loss is really going to hurt Islam Meadow, not just in a mental standpoint, but they're going to be 0-1 in the league, and it goes by league standings. That's right. why Putnam's at first at 1-0, and we're in second at 2-0, but they're 1-0 in the league, so that's going to push us down in the uh, standings. If this was a non-league game, it might not, depending on how the other teams do, because a lot of we started early. A lot of teams are only 1-0. This is our third game. A lot of teams, this is their second game. Uh, so this is going to push us down in the standings a lot. And with this new point system, uh, it, it can hurt. It can hurt. But a long time. We're still only in September. You still got October and November. Quarterback sneak up the middle. And players are still fighting for it. I don't know if the ball came out or not. Seven... And a half minutes left in the ball game. A long game for the Spartans. Here's another trivia question, Matt. Uh, you obviously know the ESPN College Game Day and how that works on Saturday mornings. Guess what college they're going to tomorrow? I'm only going to guess, but I'm going to say UConn? No, they're going to oh. North Dakota State. Wow. Yep. They're going to uh, North well, Dakota State, you know who have won the national championship in the Division I AA twice, I believe, in two straight North years. North Dakota State. Bison. I was, I was hoping they would go to the UConn-Michigan <laughs> game. You well, know, that'd be a bigger game, but uh, apparently uh, North Dakota State, State is where they're going to. Now, would you go? Is we going to see a uh, false start here on the play? If it went to, uh, no, it's not, UConn's not in Hartford. Uh, it's, the school is in, it's in the middle of Storrs, nowhere. Connecticut. Yeah, it's, it's far away. And... Their football field is in East Hartford. Oh, okay. Yep. Uh, you, so maybe it's over you, the river. Would you make the trip to uh, oh, absolutely. game day? <laughs> oh, my God. I'd be there at midnight waving my sign. <laughs> those crazy, those crazy on-campus students love to show their pride at college game day. Not a big fan of the new UConn uh, logo, though. Yeah. I don't know why they changed it. No, the old one was great. Yeah. The, was the great. traditional Husky. So it'll be fourth and six for the Central Golden Eagles as the quarterback Aaron Williams rolls to his right, stumbling, gets away from an East Summit tackler, and he's going to be short of the first down. So it'll be a turnover on downs, and East Summit will take over. So let's see if uh, Devin Kennedy comes back in. And no, it'll be Ryan Dunn. Possibly. Not sure. Some East Summit players up in arms. They're not really sure on what's going on. You see Brett Smith uh, James Griffin walking side by side there. Now they split, but I'm pointing them out because you can see, just see the disappointment in their face. Uh -huh. So East Long Meadow is around their own 18-yard line. It looks like there's a new quarterback in there. I can't see his number. It is uh, Tyler Maloney who hands it off 
to number 46 for East Long Meadow. Number 40. Oh, number 40? Yep. Jeremy Venn. That's why I kind of said it with a question mark there. I was like, is that 46 or is that 40? Tyler Maloney is the quarterback taking charge now for the Spartans. Late here in the fourth quarter. Well, he, he will be the man for the job next year, right. so it's good for him to get some uh, opportunity. Monzello in motion, hand up the middle to Adam Maurer. So it'll be third and one for these Song Metal Spartans. Maloney sends Monzello in motion. Hand up to Maurer. Nothing. And East Long Meadow will send out their punt unit. And Russell's blown on the field. It's going to be a timeout. And we're going to take one with them with 3.50 left in the game. Central leads 49th, nothing. New quarterback in for the Central Golden Eagles. They're sending out number 18, Juan Arango. Arango under center. He's got three men behind him. Hand up, up to middle, and good stop by East Middle. You can see uh, Coach Martin not, uh, has his head down there. Disappointing with his uh, East Summit team.
This is one uh, where you saw Meadow, they, they want to forget quick. They want to forget after tonight. And, right. Uh, going to practice on Monday, refreshed. Arango hands it up. Good stop again by Islamato. Still fighting hard here with three minutes, under three minutes, excuse me, left in the ball game. Trailing by a score of 49 nothing. I want to thank Matt, you, you know, being here tonight. I want to thank our camera girl, Jamie Rook. I want to thank the executive producer of LCAT, Don Mackey. I would like to thank Sam Blake for joining us. Jason Cloutier for uh, being so kind to come up here and help us out. Tony Santanel, the sports director of LCAT. Nina Fazio and Ariel Vernadakis. And everyone here at LCAT who makes the production great. And uh, we'll be covering all the sports for East Long. I know you can also check out LCAT News, which airs every Friday night. And in the studio, which I host with an East Salmon athlete each week, Wednesday nights at 7 o'clock. Uh, all on Channel 5. Again, you can also follow us on Twitter at LCAT Sports. And uh, if you are our 100th follower, you can do a broadcast with us. Again, I, I think we're around 84, 85, so we're climbing. We'll hit triple digits soon enough. Arango up the middle with his running back and looks like he's going to carry some East Long Meadow defenders for the first down on fourth down. You can also check out our YouTube page at LCAT 0028. Under a minute here to play in the third game of the season, free song medal. And uh, Matt, as we approach 30 seconds left in the game, who are your players of the game? Well, the offensive player of the game, uh, no doubt my opinion, is Cody Williams. Uh, the excellent quarterback, uh, Central, uh, displayed an outstanding performance tonight. And if we turn it over to the defensive side, it's going to be Juwan Williams of Central. Yeah, the Cousins definitely doing work tonight. Cody winning the Pizza Shop Offensive Player of the Game and Juwan winning the Let's Yo Defensive Player of the Game. That's going to end this game as the clock ticks to double zero. East Long Middle loses 49 to zero. They move to two and one. And Central moves to one and one. Uh, Matt, be looks like the band's going to leave, so we might be able to get a little post game here. <laughs> how do you rebound if well, you're, you're Esau Meadow? And how do you handle if you're Central? Because you can't too get overconfident because then you could go right. into one of those games I call a uh, trap game where you get right, too yeah. overconfident. Yeah, I mean, Esau Meadow has a bye week next week, so they can take that you know, as a positive. So they're going to get two weeks of practice now of, I'll tell you what, they're going to be going hard yeah. Monday after school. They're going to they're gonna have you know one tough practice session, but... Uh, you know, practice hard and uh, forget about this. We'll put this one in the back of your brain and uh, come out hard next time out here. Turnovers was the issue tonight. Yeah, for oh, definitely Meadow. early on. Three turnovers, a muff, and two fumbles led to three consecutive touchdowns by Central. So that definitely was a turning point early on in the game. And only good things for uh, Central as Cody Williams, Juwan Williams, and others are making a really good impact here in Western Mass. And uh, are you thinking another Super Bowl for the Golden Eagles? Uh, I would assume Too early so, or? yeah. I mean, it is early, but... You know, this is a very strong central team. Um, and obviously 49 nothing against the Spartans, who, you know, is a very, I, in my opinion, I still think the Spartans are a very good team. So uh, I could see a Super Bowl run for the Central uh, Golden Eagles. Uh, again, Isan Mudo falls to 2 on one Again, they have a bye week. But next week, uh, we will be covering their game. I, th Matt, I want to thank you, and I want to thank everyone at LCAT, and we hope to join you next time.